Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at the JF-17 Block 1 KJL-7 radar for airborne use and BVR only. Prerequisites for watching and understanding this video. The viewers understand the basics of a modern pulse Doppler radar. Because if I do this like one of my normal videos where I explain all the real kind of layman's terms and the absolute basics, this will be a three hour video because it's a complex radar. So I'm going to assume that you've watched one of my pulse Doppler basics radar video or you just know about the radars anyway. Not included in this video is weapons employment. That will be in separate weapons videos. IFF, that will be in a separate IFF video. Data link integration, that that will be in a separate data link video. So the airborne attack radar in that case we can split into two main categories. One ACM or WVR that means within 10 miles fighting close up fighting or this here BVR generally means outside of 10 miles. It can technically be closer than 10 miles but generally it's outside 10 miles. So this here is what we're doing today. The BVR capability of this radar has three sub sub modes that is RWS range or search, TWS track while scan and VS vertical search. I'm going to assume you all know what those mean and we're not going to go into them any further. Within each of those we have several sub 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 modes. Under range while scan the actual type of track or lock we can have is a SAM, an STT or a DTT. SAM like in the F-16, is a situational awareness mode track. And the point of tracking is that you can gather information about a target and you can launch a weapon, but it also allows us to track other targets in the scannable area of the radar. Next, STT, single target track. I'm sure you're all aware it focuses all of the radar's energy, locks onto the hostile target, and it can't see any other hostiles. Dual target track, a real interesting piece of equipment on this aircraft, is dual target track. Despite its name, it's not similar to STT. It allows us to have a priority target tracked for information gathering and launching weapons and it also allows us to have a secondary target tracked for firing and information collection. And I'm going to assume that you all understand the positives and negatives of each of these. Next, track while scan. From that, the actual type of track we can have is a bug, which is our primary mode of using TWS. And I'll describe that as similar to SAM. We have STT, that's exactly the same as an RWS STT, and a DTT, I believe that's exactly the same as the RWS DTT as well from what I can see. And finally we have a VS velocity search and this, well you already know what that does, we'll go through and show you but it's simply a velocity search. The next thing is I want to look at the controls. First we're going to look at the elevation, this allows us to point the radar up or down, it's something you'll need in all aircraft. We can elevate the radar with sensor up and sensor down or you can have it set up as an axis. And you can see that one I'm sliding there, that is my antenna elevation. I've got it set up as an axis. Next is the S1 toggle, and we're gonna be using S1 backwards to make the radar screen, which we're gonna have in our lower MFCD as soy, our sensor of interest. Next, we'll be using the S24 or five way. S2 forward to increase range if we want, S2 backwards to increase range, S to left. This will cycle between the three scan modes that we talked about. It would also allow us to switch between the two guys that we've got in our DTT. S to right will change our scope or our range of azimuth if we want to use that. We can always use the onboard OSBs and that's probably what I would use but I'm just letting you know you can do it like this. We've got T5 press for target lock. We've got S to press for target unlock. Also T5 up, so TDC up, down, left, and right for controlling a TDC or you can have that set to an axis if you want. Here is the mission and I've provided this mission linked in the video description of this video so you can try the exact same mission. This is us and we're not moving, we've got active pause on. If you don't know what that is, go and research it and put active pause on. In fact, why not, I'll just show you. That is active pause. So we're not moving anywhere, but everyone else is. We have a plethora of bad guys and good guys. Uh, we're not going to distinguish between bad guys and good guys because we're not doing IFF. They're moving towards me and away from me in a basically continuous cycle, and they will do that all day. They are all at the same altitude, which is unrealistic, but I had to set it up in a hurry. They are at different speeds, so they will show differently on our velocity search. It's basic practice to have our radar set up in this lower MFCD, so stick away. We're going to go to radar. Now we can't manipulate this unless we've made this MFCD soy our center of interest. To do that, we're going to be S1 down or aft. I had to press it twice there for some reason. I don't know why, but now I've got the asterisk there. This is now soy. We can now manipulate it. Let's go and have a look at our options. In a clockwise fashion, we've got range while scan. So this guy we press there is going to allow us to choose from range while scan, track while scan, 
or velocity search. Note that we've also got a load of other options that aren't particularly relevant for what we're doing here, which is BVR air to air. So that's because we're in nav mode. So what we're going to do is change modes here so that we're going to go to intercept because this is air to air. Mm, I just wanted to show that radar can work similarly in nav mode. So now we're in intercept mode. I can show you we can cycle through range or scan, track or scan, velocity scan, or we can cycle through with the S2 left. So you can see clicking like that. We'll start with the range or scan today. Next is standby. So we've put our radar on standby. Our antenna, if you like, is not moving anymore. Note, don't think that this means that the radar is not emitting. It is still emitting some energy. So you're not completely silent. So something to bear in mind. Put that back on. IFF, we're not doing today. Silent. If you really want to silence your radar, although the antenna is still moving per se, that is a silenced radar. There is no emission coming out of it anymore control we've got declutter which can take away our flight instruments which we'll go over in a bit also iff information but we're not doing that today get rid of that we've got our range do you want this b scope this is called a b scope from here to here 80 miles 40 miles 20 miles and so on s2 forward and aft we'll do the same trick like that prf i'm going to assume that you all know what prf is and what the advantages and disadvantages of medium and high frequency are we're currently on high you can see that because it says high there and high there we can go on medium or we can go on auto meaning it will switch between high and medium next are our flight instruments a modern attack radar like this is designed to be used with us heads down so we don't need to look out of the hud we can fly the plane from here here is our barometric altitude here is our current heading here is our master arm status. Are we armed or not armed? And I've just realized I'm not armed. Sorry about that. We're back now. And just to show now that we've got missiles on board, I can turn off and you can see we're safe. And on at our missiles are now ready for use. There is our speed currently in CAS, calibrated airspeed. Here is our bars. It is the amount of vertical scan that we're doing our scan zone how thick is it in terms of elevation each bar is about three to four degrees so one bar would be a very thin scan in terms of vertical two bars slightly thicker and four bars thicker four bars will cover more elevation of scan but the refresh rate will be lower and so actually tracking targets will be more difficult so that is a judgment you have to make as a radar operator next is our stabilization mode currently it's not functional and that's good because i don't see any reason why you would other be ever be anything else than normal next is our azimuth of scan so we're currently scanning 25 degrees of azimuth so that is 25 degrees there 25 degrees there totaling in 50 degrees or we can have 60 degrees or 15 degrees we can also use s2 right to travel between these different ones generally in attack we're going to have 30 that's my preference exactly the same reason why the bigger the scan zone in terms of azimuth the lower the refresh rate the more difficult it becomes to fight so now let's have a look at our symbology here so what we can see is that the dotted lines here are the limits of our azimuth of scan if we were to move our tdc around with our td cursor as i showed earlier the limits will follow up to our bump stop there and bump stop there next is our bar you can see here you'll see four steps bar one bar two bar three bar four and it will repeat and it's counting there that's so you can see what bar you're on at the moment i can change my elevation so that's the assumed that's the actual and we can see that we're down at minus 15 at the moment now what i've done is i've aimed the antenna the radar antenna right down into the sea now and you can see the targets are now disappearing they've gone into memory mode they've become small and finally disappeared i went up there it pointed up into the sky we won't see them either i'd have to put it back there roughly in the middle because these guys are roughly co-altitude it populates they're no longer a memory mode these are now what we call tracks and we can manipulate them and of course you can see this is telling me you know i'm aiming at 30 up and down to 30 down back to flight instruments this is our horizon line this is our velocity vector our path marker this tells us where we're flying so we're currently flying a few degrees below the horizon this is all for situational awareness next is our waypoint one you can see that is our waypoint one so we do have a little navigation shown over here next is our azimuth carrot so this carrot here shows where where the antenna is in elevation this shows where the antenna is in terms of azimuth again within the boundaries and within the bump stops 
of the radar. Next is our TDC cursor, this guy here. The normal layout it shows is the two lines as ever. And we have at the range that we've set, so if that's 80 range, then that's uh, 60, that's 40, that's 20. So let's go and put it at 20 there in terms of range, distance from us. At 20 miles from us, if we were to draw a plumb line down with four bars selected, the upper range scannable area of our radar is 19,000 feet. The lower scannable distance elevation is 14,000 feet. If we go out to 60 miles, about 60 miles there, then if we will draw a plumb line down at 60 miles away from us with four bars selected and our elevation centered there, it would then be a maximum of 26,000 feet and 7,000 feet. If I were to aim the radar up, it's 149,000 feet down to 131,000 feet or aim it down minus 60,000 feet down to minus 79,000 feet. Okay, and if I change the bars, you can see it will change correspondingly. As you probably picked up there as well, you've got um, quarters here and in terms of azimuth, you've got uh, 0, 20 right, 40 right, 60 right, uh, 20 left, 40 left, uh, 60 left. Now we're going to do some locking. So TDC cursor, we're going to SAM this guy. That means putting him here and pressing the lock button as we saw earlier. He is now in SAM. So we are tracking him and we can fire a missile and we can keep a look on the other tracks as well. Note that we get extra information about the SAM target. First of all here is his range in nautical miles and bearing from my TDC cursor to him. And you can see I can move around and that changes. Next I've got his vector. Unfortunately we can't see the vector, it's hidden in this horizontal, uh, this vertical line. His vector, I'm almost certain is moving towards me, is currently a little tail that will be showing down like that. We can see his angels is 16 there. We can see that he's Sam because he is the triangle and he has the circle. And I said we wouldn't go into weapons information but just out of interest, that's the minimum range of our weapon. That is the uh, no escape range of our weapon. That is the maximum range of our weapons. Target credentials. He is 17.3 nautical miles away from us. He is an impact time of uh, 32 seconds. Our combined velocity there, closure rate is better there. So currently we're closing at uh, 83 knots. That's going to get less as he's turning around uh, in knots. His azimuth deflection from zero is 25R. That means he is 25 degrees right of the center of my aeroplane, my uh, ball site, if you like. It's 25 degrees right. He's now minus a closure rate, so he's now getting away from me. One thing to point out is that this is all repeated in the HUD. We can see his range there, we can see the closure rate there, he's 28 right there, we can see we've got an arrow and a dot pointing to, you know, he's over there somewhere basically by uh, 20 odd degrees. Here is a target designator box, his 51 seconds uh, impact time TOF. This little guy here is our dynamic launch zone, but that's not for today, that's for when we go through our weapons. Next, if we want to STT him, what we can do is we can press target lock again. And I think actually I have to have my TDC over him. For some reason I can't STT him and I'm wondering if it's because he's heading away from me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock. So I'm going to press the unlock button as we saw earlier. I'm going to try a different guy, a guy that's heading towards me. Let's see if I can STT that. I think this guy's heading towards me. Hopefully it was in range of an STT. So I'm going to press target lock. And we've got Sam. And you can see, ah, we've got a good description of his vector there. You see his vector there? Uh, showing that a lot better now. Uh, target lock again. Uh, there we go. We've got him in STT. So now it's in single target track. And what you'll see is that the other guys will fade away. We're no longer scanning either side of him. The radar antenna is also locked. You can see that carrot there and that carrot there are now locked. And they will change moving on where he is. And if I press target lock again, I'm back to Sam. I know he doesn't say it there, but that is Sam. If I press target lock again, he's back to STT. And these guys will disappear again. And if I want to unlock completely, I'm just going to let this dis guys disappear so I can show you that happening. Target unlock completely. And I've unlocked completely. And everything will repopulate. And there we go, we are repopulating. Next we're going to go to track while scan, which is a whole different kettle of fish. There we go. First of all, note that it has different uh, azimuth choices here. I just noticed that my elevation carrot slipped slightly. I'm just going to put that back up. Sometimes it likes to move itself when it's tracking a certain target, so I've put that back up there. If you remember, we can bug, we can STT, or we can DTT. So, I want to go and bug a guy, cursor over him, target lock, uh, button, and he's bugged. You can see his vector, uh, we've got a dynamic launch zone here for the weapon that you can see, and we can see everything else, and we can fire a weapon at him 
all this stuff populates the same as it was before and if I wanted to unbug just target unlock we target unlock to be back to standard or if we want a single target track we can first bug him and then we can press target lock again we can STT again oh yes it's, uh, sometimes you won't be able to get STTs or DTTs because of their azimuth because of their aspect uh, because of their range because of their speed because of their altitude again it all comes back to the big uh, the thing at the beginning of understanding radars so we've successfully got an STT on him here um, I'm just going to show that again because it was being a bit funny so I'm going to press once for bug I'm waiting for him to repopulate there we go let's try getting him in again I'm thinking I'm struggling because he's turning a corner at the moment get him in. so we've got him bugged there I'm going to press again for STT there we go it's working better now because he's heading towards us and that is oh <laughs> okay it took a few seconds but it's now bugged it so it's now stt'd him radars can take a few seconds to switch between modes and you can see we're in full stt now we can't see anything else we've got his credentials and we can fire like that i am going to press the target lock button again and it's going back to bugged notice when it's bugged i can't move the azimuth anymore it's now centered around him 25 degrees left 20 degrees right and if I want to now DTT, so that is have a second target that I can fire upon, then I'm going to say get this guy here, target lock, and I've now got DTT. Here's my primary target, here's my secondary target. As I've got it set up there, with DTT showing there, I can now fire two missiles in a row. The first will go for that guy, the second will go for that guy. Out of interest, I could hit S2, and what it'll do is it will cycle between these two as the primary. So S2 left, sorry, I meant to say. S2 left, he's now primary of the DTT. And S2 left, he's now primary of the DTT. Again, if I wanted to get back to bugged, then I'm going to go back to this guy here. I'm going to press target lock. I'm going, is that going to put me STT or is that going to put me bugged? It can take a few seconds waiting for it waiting for it it's trying to attain the sct it's not going to do it no because he's, you see he's beaming at the moment he's heading sideways i can't get the sct it's trying but it can't get him so what i'm going to do is cancel i'm going to unlock all the way back to the beginning and just start again so i don't know just run through the cycle again again when you see targets that are going to start heading away or turning left or right and you've not got your prf set up as you want you will have problems like this where you can't get an sct you can't get a dtt or whatever uh, let's try going for uh, this guy here. So I'm pressing once. That's bugged. Pressing again. You see, you got an SCT, no problem that time. If I want to press it again, I go back to bugged. Uh, if I want a DTT with this guy here, that's dual target track. And if I want to cancel everything, unlock, and so on. And that will try again. That will unlock. So that is, I know it looks a bit fiddly, but once you get used to it, it's perfectly easy to use has all the restrictions of a normal radar but that's how it is next is vs it's super super simple i'm going to use s2 left to get there this time we're in vs so what we're looking at here now is not the range this is no longer a range scale this is a closure rate uh, we can set the maximum as 1200 knots or 2400 knots so we can see this guy's closing at this speed here if i've moved my tdc over uh, here that is 20 that's 30 320 knots that is uh, uh 28 uh 280 knots these guys are all about 600 to 700 knots. Now, I can't actually lock guys from here. That's not how this works. But what it, it, it's about building up situational awareness. What I will then do is S2 left. Say that guy there is closing at a, a, a no rate. So he's currently notching or beaming. It's currently beaming. I'll then switch over to RWS or track or scan. I know it's that guy there and I can lock him from that. So that's how I would use VS. Uh, with the JF-17 radar. Now one thing that we did miss out is that we can actually DTT in RWS. If we go and have a look at this, so I'm going to get that guy there. So if I SAM that guy there, he's now SAMed. And if I get this guy here, we've got a DTT. Uh, I can S2 left, switch between them. So it's kind of like an, this, this, this DTT through RWS. It's kind of like an amalgamation of TWS and RWS in my mind. And uh, now we haven't tried firing weapons at uh, with an RWS DTT yet, but we think you can probably send a missile out of this guy and this guy at the same time with range war scan. So that's a real achievement for the aircraft if that's possible. Okay, so that's that. Please go and download my mission and uh, practice locking stuff up, cycling between the STT, the DTT, the bug, the SAM, and back to just master scan. I hope that was useful and see you later.